comes to teens, one of the biggest things I hear from parents is that their teens get really, really mad at them. Sometimes it's justified anger that just has a very extreme response. Another time, the anger doesn't seem justified at all and seems to ebb and flow with the emotions of whatever their child is feeling. When it comes to anger in teens, a lot of the time we kind of just assume that's how it goes. Teens are angry, right? But the reality of the situation could be a number of different things. When it comes to depression or anxiety, anger tends to be a way that these experiences escape teens. They're not sure how to feel anxious or don't want to, understandably, and sublimate their feelings into anger. Then all it takes is a little something to kind of trip that anger and they're off to the races. But one of the things we notice most often is that if you are a parent who is constantly targeted by your teen's anger, it can actually kind of mean a good thing for your relationship, as difficult as that may be. Teens tend to direct their anger at the person that they feel safest with. It tends to be the person they know that they can be angry at and not potentially lose that relationship or have negative repercussions. So if your teen is constantly angry with you, there's a chance that's because you're their safe person. They know that you'll love them anyway and that they have your unconditional positive regard, which as difficult as that may be for you, can be a really positive thing and a great tool moving forward, especially if we're trying to examine it through a therapeutic lens. Hello, this is Helene from Mindful Healing. And the topic for today is how to stop taking your teen's attitude personally. First, we need to look, look at what is attitude, because attitude can be a number of things. Attitude can be, I'm angry, and I don't want to tell you why. And I'm expressing my anger because what I'm really feeling is something I'm ashamed about and I want to avoid it. Attitude can be, I'm cocky and I think I know all the answers and so don't you tell me what to do. Attitude can be simply rudeness or worse yet, attitude can be, I simply don't want to do it. And I know that if I give you enough grief, you will cave in. Now that last one, that's one of the hardest to break because it depends on you and it depends on your ability to not only disengage, but to accept the fact that when you finally start holding the line and don't give in, their attitude, that emotional bullying, they will escalate. And you will have to hold the line. And once they finally get to the point that they realize that having an attitude, being rude, creating a tantrum, bullying you emotionally is not going to work, believe it or not, they'll adapt. And guess what? Their self-esteem won't be any worse for it. In fact, underneath it all, they'll be relieved because they need that structure. Sometimes they need to be saved from their own feelings. Now, just plain rudeness. Sometimes it's important to ignore it if there's another issue going on and they're being rude and that becomes distracting. And it just makes you come off as the authoritarian parent rather than as somebody who's going to really be open to listening to what's behind the rudeness and what pain they may be expressing. And sometimes they're simply moody. They have an attitude. they surly. They don't want to be around family. They don't want to do this. Something's going on inside them. And again, open discussion, validation, empathy, just making it safe for them to share what's really going on can make all the difference. Sometimes kids just want to be heard. They want to have a voice. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with them, but they need to know that their pain their thoughts, their ideas have actually been heard and not just automatically dismissed or rejected. Mm -hmm.